Hello, everybody. My name is Mr. Steve, and this is a fact or fiction program all about UFOs. Now, UFOs, do they exist or not? That's what we're trying to figure out. Everybody has their own opinion on it, and that is great. That's what it's made for. Us all that have our own opinions. So we don't know who's right. We don't know who's wrong. Just believe what you want to believe. But to get us started, let's talk about what a UFO is. A UFO stands for Unidentified Flying Object. Something in the sky that you don't know what it is. UFO, very simple. UFOs have been spotted everywhere around the world for a really long time. We're going to look at some photographs that are famous for UFO sightings. And we're also going to hear some uh, video testimony. And we're going to watch a little video that shows us how UFO photos can easily be faked, just so you get an idea of all the different things that can possibly happen with UFOs, whether you believe they're real or not. Now, if you want to learn about UFOs, I definitely suggest you go to your local public library and borrow UFO books. This is an example of one of the books that we have here. And so inside this, there are lots of different information in this, different information in this book. Pretty cool stuff. We're not going to read it right now. We're going to watch a video and we're going to look at some photos. But again, UFO books at the library. That's where to go for sure. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to check out what we got going on here. Okay, start off with some pictures. This photo right here is one that has never been proven or disproven for its validity. Now, the thing is, a lot of people do try to trick us with fake um, photos of UFOs. Those are called hoaxes. Um, this, we don't know if it's a hoax or not, but that's a picture from New Jersey. This next one is from Norway. Now, it happened between 1981 and 1986. There were mysterious lights in Norway's remote Hestalen Valley alternately hovering or streaking at incredible speeds, puzzling residents as well as scientists and ufologists who came to investigate. So what do you think of that one? I mean, it's definitely a UFO because nobody knows what it is, but do you think it has aliens in it? Well, let's check out the next one. This is Washington, DC. And I think it's from 1950s. And you can see there's these strange lights that are happening right above um, the US Capitol. Don't know what they are. How about another one? This is one of the more famous pictures of a UFO. This is from Brazil in 1958. And it's from the deck of the Brazilian Navy ship Almirante Saldana. And this this person named Almiro Barana, I hope I said his name right, took four photographs off the ship as it passed over. It kind of looks like Saturn, doesn't it? Um, there were a lot of people who also saw this as well. That's an important factor too, because if it's somebody that just saw it and they were the only person that saw it, it might not be so valid or you might not think it is, but this one was seen by lots of people. What do you think? Yeah, let's go to the next one. These are called the Lubbock Lights. It says the Lubbock Lights is a classic example of Hynek's UFO category of nocturnal lights. Other witnesses saw the same V-shaped formation of lights as photographer Carl Hart Jr., who took this in four additional pictures. So that's another example of UFOs. Now, that's up in the sky. So if it's not an alien spacecraft, for example, what do you think that could be, these lights here? I mean, there's other different options I'm sure that you could think of. But if you want to think it's a UFO, like an alien spaceship, you can go right ahead. Nobody can say you're wrong. There are even have been some photographs that have ta been taken right around the area of Bellingham, Massachusetts, where I am. And I want to show you this one. Right here, this looks pretty awesome. 
See these UFO photos? These are some of the most famous UFO photos ever taken around here in New England. And they were taken in Woonsocket, Rhode Island, which is right across the border from Bellingham, Massachusetts. I bet it's about a 10 minute drive from here. And it was taken in 1977, or 1967, sorry. And I'll just say a little bit about that story. At midday on June 10th, 1967, Harold Trudell pulled to the side of West Rentham Road near East Woonsocket, Rhode Island. The 29-year-old man reputedly had seen unidentified objects in the area before, and on this day, he was determined to document them. According to his account, he did not have to wait long as a metallic dome-shaped object soon approached. As the UFO hovered over the power lines, Trudell snapped some pictures for about five minutes. And those are two of them. What in the world could that have been if it wasn't an alien spaceship back in 1967? Nowadays, we might say a drone or something like that, because drones have definitely made it a lot easier to have identified flying objects. But looking at these UFOs, do you think they possibly could be driven by aliens? What would you do if you saw that? Could you imagine if you were driving and you saw that UFO? Or so what if you were with your friends and you saw them? Well, our next story takes place in 1994 in Zimbabwe, Africa. And it is about some school kids who swear that during recess, they all saw a UFO landing. And they have a video about it. It's four minutes long. Check this out and tell me what you think. In the trees over there. There's been a UFO alert across Southern Africa. This is a continuation of possible UFO story. A large, brightly colored object was seen traveling very fast above Zimbabwe, Zambia, and South Africa. I thought it was an alien, and he had big eyes. Several planes saw it. The experts are baffled. Rua, Ariel School, 19th September, 94, 12, 12, local time. Could you tell me what you saw on, on Friday? Well, it looked like it was like glinting in the trees. Like it looked like round about like a, like a disc, like a round. Are you sure it yeah. wasn't a, a Harrier jump jet or no, something that the Zimbabwe Air Force had got? It was like in a, in a disc. something silver on the ground amongst the trees and a person in black. They had big black eyes. That's all I saw. I saw a glimpse. They kind of turned around and stared and then went back into a kind of like ship. I saw this this silver thing in, in amongst this clump of, of trees with this one thing sitting on, on the side and uh, another thing sort of like running up and down the, the top. What does he look like? His, his face was like this, and his eyes were down here. Uh, Mr. Mackey, you're headmaster of Ariel School. Tell me, what, what, what do you think of all this? Um, I feel sure that the children feel that they did see something. We asked them to draw pictures of what they saw on Friday, and um, after looking at those, I definitely feel that they did see something. What do you think that was? I agree that it could be something that we um, are not common with. Um, but to actually say that it was a UFO, I would be uh, reluctant to make a decision like that. Parents and teachers were initially skeptical, but across the region, people said they'd seen a bright light in the sky and a crash. What did you see? I just uh, uh, saw a glow over my chicken run, uh, a very orange glow. But it was a helicopter or no, a what? No, it was just a big round wall. Can you just tell us what happened the other night at Kariba? We suddenly looked up and we saw this thing coming over the top of the hill. As it sort of grew, uh, came abreast of us, it suddenly uh, changed from this glow to, to, let's say, two big red orange balls. Um, again, first thought was um, an Airbus 300 with the 
the two engines. But then one thing we noticed about it was the, the lack of sound. In total, I would say about 14 people saw this, in our group anyway. They did tell me from London this would be the biggest story of the 20th century. So the UFO enthusiast came to talk to the children. As I said to Tim yesterday, I mean, I, I do believe the children saw something. Saw a door. What equipment have you brought with you? Uh, well, Gunter is a highly technical chap, and he's made his own Geiger counter, his own metal detector. We're going to check it out and see if there's any radioactivity there. Cindy, what are your impressions after this morning's little expedition? Well, I, I certainly believe the children. I've come across a similar type of thing in Broadhaven in Wales, 19... 79 and the British didn't believe it although I went down three times and it's very similar to the whole incident here. Many of the eyewitnesses are still convinced they saw something. The Rua sightings remain unexplained. Like so many other UFO sightings. Speaking of unexplained, let's go back to the United States. So this right here that I wanted to show you is a photograph from 1950. This man named Paul Trent took some photographs on his farm when he saw some unique looking uh, objects flying in the sky. To this day, the photographs shot by Paul Trent, who died in 1998, are considered to be some of the most credible images of UFOs ever captured. And there it is right there. What do you think that could be? It's 1950, so it's not so easy to manipulate photographs. In fact, this one was viewed by um, experts at knowing if photographs were manipulated, and they claim that this absolutely was not manipulated. What he took a photo of was actually in the sky. And so I will tell you, there are some people who believe that this object right here is an actual rear view mirror or side view mirror of a truck that was very uh, popular in the 1950s and they think that perhaps that this was just put up in the air with some string and made to pretend that it was a ufo but um, paul trent definitely never said that he made this up he always said that it was not a made-up photo it was something he actually saw but it is not very hard to make up photos. And that's what we're gonna do for our last video is we're gonna watch this experiment where some kids make up UFOs and see if they can, after they take photos, trick some random adults on the street to watch this. The UFO phenomenon has fired our imaginations for 50 years. The very idea of alien beings and spacecrafts from another planet, another galaxy, holds us mesmerized. We want magic. What flying saucers do, over and above the question of, are they real, is that they bring that magic back. We take all the old myths and wonder, wrap them in shiny stainless steel dish-shaped machines. Most of those who believe haven't actually experienced anything themselves. They buy into UFOs because of a few dozen blurry images. But what are they really seeing? This photo, for example, is one of the most famous in the history of UFOs. Over the years, this shot and another taken moments later have been examined many times. No one has ever found any telltale signs of fakery, no retouching or darkroom funny business. But even if they're real photographs, they're not necessarily photographs of a real UFO. To challenge the seemingly unassailable evidence of UFO photographs, we decided to find out how hard it would be to make our own believable UFO photos. Did we go to Hollywood special effects experts? Not exactly. Meet our crack team of alien spacecraft designers. These youngsters gathered a hodgepodge of things you could find in any home. The bottom's one of those cake tin things. The kids mixed and matched all the stuff with a little imagination, a glue gun, and some silver paint. This is a Technicon spacecraft from the planet Technicon. 
A short while later, they had UFOs they hoped would pass the toughest scrutiny. Once the paint and glue had dried, we gave the kids bamboo poles, fishing line, and cameras. Next, they took turns tossing and photographing a Cadillac hubcap. That's as sophisticated as we got, but the results were impressive. The children came up with several photos that could easily pass for classic UFO shots. We were ready to go public. I mean, you, guys have, you guys have seen photographs and videos of UFOs. And... I posed as a UFO author and displayed the photos at a shopping mall. This is my new book coming out next month, The Hard Evidence. Take a look at these. Photographs, see what you think. We've got, uh, to bolster the photo's authenticity, I invented a story to go with them. Who took that? It's the foreman at this construction site. He was taking pictures of the, of the house that they were building, and one of the guys said, look at this, and he snapped a couple shots. How many people saw it? Six, six, six different people. Yes, yeah, so it wasn't like anybody's hallucinating or something. I mean, this looks real. It looks like some kind of flying saucer of some kind. They look real, but uh, how can you prove that they are real? That's the big question. If we wanted our photographs accepted into the annals of UFO mythology, we needed a stamp of approval from experts. Dr. Rand Molnar of the Brooks Institute of Photography is frequently asked to verify alleged UFO photos. When he examines an image, he doesn't decide whether the subject is a real UFO or a tin pie plate, only whether the photo has been manipulated in some way. For instance, Molnar thinks this famous UFO photo looks suspicious. There appears to be a lot of what I'll call density manipulation in where the item is. That is, it looks like somebody has been in there with uh, some sort of a, a drawing tool, a pencil, eraser. And I just don't see that kind of activity anyplace else in the scene. Would the computer be able to spot the tricks we use to fake our photos? First, we showed Dr. Molnar the hubcap shot. It appears stationary. I don't really see any hint of uh, movement. But we know this object was moving because we threw it. On this count, the computer has been fooled. Now, here's our prize fake UFO shot. Remember, it's two plastic lids glued together, hanging from a string. Surely we are going to be found out. Uh, no sign of a string still. Nothing to indicate a string, a wire, or anything. Why can't the computer see the string? Because the camera that shot the original picture couldn't see it. Contrary to what you see on TV cop and spy shows, the computer can't detect a detail that the film never captured. No string on the negative, no string on the computer. It looks a little more realistic in that it has a little bit of roughness to it. Uh, the granularity of the film matches the, the background and the foreground subject both. So it looks a little more real. It looks real, but the plain fact is that most UFO photos are of such poor quality that it's impossible to tell if they're fake. But there's something strange about UFOs, something that makes us want to believe. For instance, you'd think the folks at the shopping mall would be relieved to know our photos were a hoax. Instead, they were disappointed. What would you think if I told you that what you're looking at there is this? <laughs> wow. I believe there's still life on other planets. I don't care about the pictures, though. I still believe there is. I still believe in UFOs. I still believe in them. I still believe they're out there. You do? There you we still know. believe? Yeah, I do. While there may be alien life out there, now that we know how easily photos can be faked, it will take much more concrete evidence to prove it. All right, so I would encourage you, if you want to have some fun, you can just go out there and make your own UFO, just like those kids did, and then see if you can use your camera and take some photos of it and maybe trick some people into thinking it's real. But overall, do you think UFOs are fact or fiction? Whatever you're saying, you're right. I'll see you next time for another fact or fiction. Bye.